Today's topic is uh, something that sounds similar to our previous one, but uh, it it is focused on one thing, okay, on one area. The title for today's sermon is Stop Fighting God. Stop Fighting God. So what is it about, okay? Stop fighting God. So, but you need, see, in reality, no one would dare to stand before God in, and, 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 and defy God, okay, and fight Him one on one, okay? <laughs> That's uh, foolishness. You know, we can never win a fight against God, okay? So that, that is not the case. But our topic is about fighting God. You know, how do we fight God? And us not knowing it. You know, you can be fighting God without you not aware of it. Okay? Now, now that is very important to discern because uh, a lot of people nowadays, they don't know that, you know, they're fighting God. Okay? People are not aware they are fighting God with their lives or with their words or with their uh, actions, okay? And it, it is something that we need to know. Something that the public needs to hear, okay? Because uh, this kind of fight is a fight that we need to avoid, okay? It's a fight that we need to, to repent about, <laughs> okay? So today I hope that uh, you will discover some uh, truths, truth in our topic and uh, hopefully if it applies to you if you think this is you fighting against god i hope that you will uh you know make your life straight okay all right so again the title is stop fighting god now, you might say, well, I'm not fighting God. I'm not doing things against God. Well, listen first, okay? Uh, please listen. Don't switch channel. Um, and I hope that uh, you will be blessed today. See, uh, for us as human beings, when life doesn't go the, the way we want it or... If life doesn't go well with us, or if life doesn't go uh, the, as planned, okay, the way we planned it, the way we we intended it to be, you know, uh, you know, we, we get upset, right? So, what do we do? Like uh, when when life doesn't turn out the way we want it, and. Uh, Instead, it's, uh, you know, what's happening is the opposite of what we wanted. So, uh, what do most people do, you know, in that scenario? Uh, some, you know, some are disappointed. Some, some would uh, blame God. Some uh, are angry at God and, and, and they, they, they point finger, you know, and maybe to other people. You know, we blame others, the blame game. And why? Because it's not in our control anymore. You know, uh, the things that are happening are, if it's out of our control, you know, not as we planned it to be, then we get upset. You know, we, we get disappointed. You know, we, we, uh, we feel that uh, people uh, failed us, disappointed us. Um, but, you know, we, we should not let our circumstances dictate our uh, happiness. We should not let uh, the circumstances determine our mood <laughs> or steal our joy for the day or, 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 or uh, determine our or influence our behavior. You know, we should not allow circumstances to influence our behavior. You know, but but I know it will surely influence our behavior. You know, our emotions will influence our behavior. I, I understand what that means because I too, I'm uh, in a counseling ministry. But my point is that, uh, is that uh, 
as a Christian, a matured Christian, you know, we should learn how to regulate it. We, we need to be aware first uh, and then uh, give it to the Lord, you know, uh, ask God for help and, uh, and then regulate. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically, uh, and then of course, uh, in Christ, you know, we need uh, grace from God, you know, uh, so that uh, we can uh, overcome. Okay? And uh, if you feel sad, if you feel bad, if you feel hurt, uh, you see, that's valid. Because we, you know, in this life, we can be hurt. We can feel sad. Um, we, we go through a lot of things and trials in this life. Okay? But we have a choice whether to remain sad, remain hurting, you know, to... to to, to hold grudge in our hearts, you know, to be bitter in this life, you know. Why not change our view on trials, you know? Like, uh, we let's view trials as a stepping stone, okay, to the next level. You know, as trials come, you know, you can, like, treat it like stepping stones where these trials will help you elevate it will help you uh, promote you to the next level right and because trials has something to teach us so why not view trials uh, as uh, something uh, that you can learn from okay that there's something to learn from it and move on okay now the the, the point that I want to drive besides that those things that are uh, that are by default, you know, uh, commonly or in reality are happening to us in the world. Um, I want you to really um, understand that there are times we are the reason for the trials that we are facing. Not all, of course. Uh, we know, I'm going to mention later, that uh, the Job, you know, uh, the trials that Job experienced, it's so ter <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but uh, it was not something that he deserves. Uh, but it was allowed by God. So not all trials is a result of what we sow, we reap. Okay? But the thing is that there's something, whether you are in the sow and reap or, you know, something that you are just tested for, uh, either ways, we need to understand that uh, it's better to, to go through a trial, to go through pain uh, when uh, you're doing the right thing than, you know, you go through pain because you did something wrong, okay? But the thing is that what I do not want you to miss is the main thing, which is God's purpose in your life. Remember this, whether you do God's purpose or not, okay, whether you do God's will or not, everyone will go through some sort of a trial, a testing, okay? It's, for us as Christians, it's like pruning, Okay, so that the Christ-like character will manifest in our lives and that people may believe that God is alive and that God is working through our lives. Okay, so this is why it is so important that everyone, whether you're, you, you're bearing fruit, okay, or not, uh, we go through some pruning. Okay, now... Um, you know, since uh, last night until this morning, I've been playing, uh, I played uh, the song entitled Blessings by Laura Story. Um, it really, you know, it's so deep that, you know, I realize, you know, uh, I don't know how to put this in words, but there's so many things, you know, for so many years in my pastoral ministry, helping people, doing this, doing that, overseeing churches and pastors and counseling here, counseling there, uh, doing training seminars, discipleship, and a lot of people, they come and then 
you know you feel betrayed you feel this and that you feel abused you feel uh, you were slandered and gossip and and so many <clears throat> anything you know only things that uh, only pastors can understand and this song is somehow the chorus says because what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near what what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise wow sorry for i'm out of tune <laughs> but you know what the the, the refrain uh, says uh, the lyric says when friends betray us when friends betray us and when darkness seems to win we know that pain reminds this heart. I'm sorry, I, I don't know the right tune. <laughs> but the, the, the song says, We know that pain reminds this heart that this is not, this is not our home. So for as long as we're in this world, okay, this decaying world because of sin, you see, we will experience some sort of tribulation. Okay, but Jesus said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. So many say, we need to keep on looking at him. Okay, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Because re remember, this is not our home. And so it's okay. It's normal to feel hurt, to feel pain in this life. Because this is not our home. So this actually creates a longing in us to be in our home. <laughs> you know, I, I remember John chapter 14, okay? Jesus said, uh, if you believe in me, believe. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. You see, that's a... Wow! This is, it's a you know promise from the lord jesus christ where i am there you mean that's our home god is our home where he is his abode is our home and in god in his abode no more tears no more crying no more death no more pain no more sadness hallelujah you see no more sickness it's a perfect place to be our home in god with the lord we long for that and that is why uh, in this life we uh, we we have an assignment to do and to finish and that is that uh, we 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 need to understand that we have a purpose okay so now going back to our topic we we really We'll feel uncomfortable when things doesn't go our way because, again, it is outside of our control. And we want things to go the way we intended, intended it to be and, and, and how uh, we, we find ways, right? We, we try to seize control. Now, it is a good thing to seize control over our situation, over your circumstances, if if what you're doing is in line or in, in, in perfect alignment to the will of God, but if it's not in alignment to the will of God, to God's will, then it's like chasing after the wind. You know, it's, it's, it's a total waste of time. It's a useless effort. So what I'm trying to say is this. If your life, if you're living a life, okay, not in accordance to the will of God, you are wasting your time. And this is just, this is a friendly reminder. We love you folks. We love everyone who are listening to, to our program. Uh, all of you, even those who are not listening to this program, we love all of you. That We love you so much that we want you to know that we want to remind you that, you see, life apart from God 
is a waste. It's a squander. You see, <laughs> there's no way we, you know, there, there's no better way. I mean, there's no other way for us to be happy but to trust Him and to obey Him. To, to, to do His will. I remember that hymn. Trust and obey. For there's no other way. To be happy with Jesus. How? It's how? To trust and obey. You see, we need to trust God and obey. So, no matter what the situation is. No matter how difficult your trial you know, how complicated your situation, how complicated your relationship, okay? Remember, uh, you know, in Facebook, uh, in a social media account, if you check uh, the, the about uh, clickable button of, of the person, of whoever the owner of the social media account, you know, there are some people who would write, okay, about themselves, relationship, complicated, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, no matter how complicated your relationships are, or is, or situation is, just stop fighting God. Don't fight God, okay? Don't resist God. If you know that you are in a complicated relationship, then, you know, Unleash or, or release yourself from that pressure, from that trap, from that bondage. You need to get out of, of a complicated relationship. Because you see, in the Lord, there's nothing as complicated relationships. Okay? The Lord will not fix that unless you want it fixed. Unless you cooperate with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, thing is, it's either you are... For God or against God? Are you with God or not with God? Okay, so that, that is the, the, the two sides of the equilibrium. Okay, so now if you are against a movement or, 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 or a, a church or a movement, a, a Christianity, let's say, for instance, if you persecute Christians, if you hate Christians, okay, you hate Christians because they believe in Jesus, if you hate the preaching of the gospel of Christ, okay, then you are fighting God, okay? How? In what way? Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, okay? Meanwhile, Saul who became Paul, okay, Saul was still breathing out m murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that he, so that if he may found any there who belong to the way, this is the religion they called the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. You see, this is the Apostle Paul before he became Paul. He was Saul. And he is a what? He's a persecution, oh, a persecutor. Okay. Verse 3, it says, As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Verse 5, so, uh, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now, the Apostle Paul did not know that he was persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. Because during that time, okay, what he is aware about, what he was aware about is that he was uh, looking for Christians, okay, and uh, he will uh, arrest them, okay, <laughs> and bring them back to uh, as prisoners to Jerusalem, okay. But he, he he was not aware that he was by doing that he was actually fighting Jesus. He was persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. So. That time, all the while, he thought he was a good religious person. He was a good Pharisee, okay, doing his duty for the glory of God. 
That's what he thought he was doing. But the Lord told him that he is actually, he was actually persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so persecuting God is, uh, I mean, persecuting God's people, persecuting Christians is also what? Persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. So, or when we harm God's people, we are attacking not just God's people, but their leader. Okay? It's like a direct assault to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, same thing with Saul. He was not aware that he was doing it against God. Okay? Persecuting Christians is persecuting the, their leader, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Paul was uh, resisting God, resisting the Holy Spirit. And maybe some of us today are also doing the same thing, the very same thing. Okay, Acts 7.51. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist. Okay, you always what? Resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? <laughs> They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. They killed the Lord Jesus. He crucified him in the cross. But the point is this, that uh, in this particular passage of scripture, it was said that, you know, people can resist the Holy Spirit. They resisted the Holy Spirit. Now, I hope it won't come to the point. Let's read Isaiah 63.10. I hope if you're resisting the Holy Spirit, it will not end to this point. Okay? Isaiah 63 10 says, Yet they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. So he, the Holy Spirit, turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Now, who can stand against the Holy Spirit? You see? No one can. So, you see, this is. Uh, <laughs> This is the hard thing, you know, when you fall in the hands of God, when, when you make God your enemy. Don't make God your enemy. That's why I told you from the beginning of this sermon, stop fighting God. Don't go against His will, okay? Start to get your life right with God, okay? Get yourself, get your lives right with God. Get right with God, okay? Okay? So that you will not find yourself fighting against God. Okay, it's that, that's a simple sermon, right? But we have to elaborate it. You know, the, we, we need to read a lot of scriptures so, so that uh, uh, a heart of stone may be convinced or somehow, you know, see the point, okay? All right, so we should not fight God. You can't fight God and expect to win the fight. <laughs> you can't fight God and expect to have to enjoy a good life. No, you cannot. Okay? If you live your life apart from God or against the will of God, you are doing it against yourself also. Not just fighting God, but you're doing it against yourself, you know? Because it, it will not go with you. So why do you do that to yourself, right? Why, why would you have, you know, why would you uh, invite harm, invite curses to your life? To your life, okay? So, friends, give yourself a favor, okay? Stop fighting God. Give yourself a favor. Repent, okay? And start living your life in accordance to the will of God. Now, let's read Acts chapter 5.38. It says, Therefore, in the present case, I, Gamaliel, this is a, one of the respected uh, uh, Pharisee in, in the Sanhedrin, okay, uh, concerning, uh, because they wanted uh, the 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 council wanted to kill the, the apostles for preaching the gospel of Christ. So, uh, Gamaliel advised them, okay? He said, leave these men, these apostles alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. 
Okay, that's wisdom. Verse 39, it says, But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting, fighting, fighting against God. And so you see, it is really biblical that we can fight God, okay, by resisting God, by resisting the Spirit's will, by, you know, by opposing God's will, okay, God's purposes, God's plan. You see, the apostles were doing the plan of God. They were implementing the plan of God. And so how? They, you know, they were preaching who Jesus is and what Jesus did. But then the 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 these this, uh, religious leaders, you know, you know, they, they they plan to 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 stop them, okay, even to the point of you know taking their lives, and so uh, if we do that, and if it's God's will, then we are actually what fighting God. So it's very clear that the Scripture tells us that activities of human origin or or based on human will are bound to fail okay we just read it okay while activities ordained by god are unstoppable it will stand even if you kill god's servants god will raise another one to continue the work to continue the plan that he ordained okay so 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 that is the point all right. So anyone opposing God's purposes, opposing God's people who are advancing God's purposes are actually fighting God who sends them. All right. So in other words, if we go against God, if we oppose God, God's servants for doing the will of God, okay, we will find ourselves fighting God. And remember, it's not about those people who speak the truth, those people who preach the gospel, it's about God and His message. All right? So, uh, in, a, uh, in a personal level, if we live our lives against the will of God, we're fighting God, so on and so forth. So now, there are many stories in the Bible that we can read, lives of people whom God called, and, 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 and the story of their lives, you know, that we can learn from. You know, it's a lot of things that we can learn from. Uh, like Jonah who left because he doesn't want to do what God told him to do. Now, what about that? You know, are, are you like Jonah? If you know the story of Jonah, of course, uh, it's a familiar story. Uh, Jonah who was swallowed by the whale. Okay? So, uh, are you like Jonah uh, who is uh, not in direct collision with God, but one who tried to avoid the will of God, okay? So Jonah doesn't want to do it. Uh, God's instruction, he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't want to comply. Is that fighting God? Is that resisting God? Yeah. Now, what if Christians do nothing, right? If you know, let's say Christians were told to go make disciples, you know, the Great Commission, if Christians doesn't do anything you know what what if christians ignore the great commission all right what if we 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 ignore god okay what is that to god is that uh fighting against god <laughs> all right now if you do nothing or you run away from god or run from the call of god in your life or if you ignore God's voice or if you ignore God's conviction or if you ignore God's leading, okay, God's direction, you are also fighting God. So either you oppose God or you, you know, you turn your face away from Him, from, you know, you ignore God, you don't, you know, want nothing to do with God. That is still what? Fighting God. <laughs> that is still fighting God. So look. What happened to, in the story, what happened to the prophet Jonah and the people with him in the boat, you know, you know what happened? Okay, they almost died. They almost lost their lives at sea just because Jonah, one man, was trying to run away 
from God. Okay? Maybe, you know, the shakings that your family is experiencing is something that you need to address. I don't know. Okay? I'm not judging. But see the catastrophe, the disaster, the, the harm that Jonah brought, okay, to those people who were with him in the boat. You see, the, what harm you can bring to others, to your neighbors, when you disobey or when you run away from God. Please try to consider. Because my advice is this. Let's, let us stop fighting God and start working with God. We need to work with God's plan and purpose. Discover what that is and start living out your purpose. Okay? So, I know to some, you know, the trials that they're facing are not based on something that they have done. But it's just that God allowed it to... to so, if they respond accordingly, uh, they will be promoted. There will be more rewards and blessings and, and, and it's going to be another level of maturity in their Christian walk, okay, Christian journey. So, that is good. So, that is why if you are going through something and you see, you feel, you maybe you, you're discerning that that sort of a trial is something that uh, is allowed so for you to overcome and grow from and learn from okay so if you're experiencing such difficulties in that scenario if you're experiencing such defeat or you know be encouraged you know why because you know we see in the bible uh, in the book of job about Job, <laughs> what happened to Job? Being cursed by Job's what perseverance in the middle of a great trial or a great suffering. Okay, it was a great challenging thing, and I never once dreamed or desired or asked God. I mean, Lord. Uh, maybe there was a time I told God I can do this also. If Job can, you know, do it, I can do. No, no, no. Like, if Abraham can do it, I can do. It. No, no. I realized, Lord, I'm not up to that challenge. <laughs> but what uh, they went through and their perseverance is an example. Is a testimony that you know uh, that uh, God's grace. I mean, God will enable us to overcome. You see, Job lost his children. That's hard. Not just his children, Job lost his wealth, his business. Okay, he was a wealthy man. He, he lost it. Not just that, but even his health. He was sick. He was in pain the whole time. But he persevered. He did not curse God. He remained loyal to God. Now, that's hard. Okay? But, you know, he did not understand why God allowed such suffering in his life and he could, not, he could not find any valid reason why he has to go through such trials when uh, he has not done anything wrong against God. He has not offended God. You know, the, the Bible says he was a, a man of integrity. He feared God. You know, he's, you know so his friends... And his friends falsely accused him or misrepresented God or gave the wrong counsel. Okay. <laughs> I, I believe his friends were doing the, their best to counsel Job, but it was not, their counsel was not right with God. So they misrepresented God. But he came, th th this is the, the best part in the book of Job. Job came to the point of surrender. Okay, Job came to the point of surrender. The point of surrender is what we need to be. Okay? In every trial that we face, we should get to the point of surrender. Okay? That is why trials 
come to us in different forms, in different magnitude, in you know, different levels. Uh, it is meant to bend us to the point of surrendering to God. <laughs> okay. Now, Job realized something that although he may not understand why he went through something that he does not deserve, he, he must still trust God. Now, Job questioned God. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry. God questioned Job. Okay, if you read the book of Job, after all the counsel that uh, his friends gave him, God questioned Job in chapters 38. 39, 40, and 41. Four chapters, okay? God asked those questions. And I tell you, even I cannot answer the questions. Okay, what are those? Okay, let's read Job 38 verses 1 to 7. Just for an example. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans? Look at that. Plans. God has a plan, okay? God has a plan, but who is it that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? V verse 3, brace yourself like a man. He's, this was addressed to Job. He said, I will question you and you will answer me, okay? Question number one, okay? God said, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Well, <laughs> you know, if I were in the place of Job uh, in his shoe, I have no answer because the only answer to this is I'm not here yet. I, 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 <laughs> I was not born yet. Or, But concerning the earth's foundation, I have no idea. Okay. Verse 5, who mark off its dimensions? Surely you know. <laughs> who stretched a measuring line across it? So I could imagine God does a steel tape. <laughs> he measured, you know, uh, a line across the uh, dimensions of the earth's foundations. But the, the question is, where is, what is the earth's foundation? So even that, I have no idea. Okay. Now, we live in this house. If you ask me, where is the foundation? I can pinpoint to you the foundation of this structure, the structure of our house, but the foundation of the earth, well, I don't know because the earth is suspended in space. It's floating. And so it's like, is, is there a foundation? <laughs> and it says in verse 6, on what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? Oh, what? Who laid this cornerstone? I, of course, the answer is God, but is there a cornerstone that you know of? That you're certain of? Verse 7 says, While the morning stars sang together. Now, let's, let's jump. Let's, let's just jump to chapter 42. Okay? Remember, Job had no answer. I mean, he, he cannot you know, interact with, you know, the way God understands things that he mentioned. Because we have no understanding about those things that were asked by God. Okay? Instead, what Job did, he, he conceded, he yielded to God's will in chapter 42. So, let me read to you Job chapter 2 verses 1 to 6. It says, then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You ask, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me. <clears throat> so, you see, Job recognizes, he recognized that he doesn't ha understand. <laughs> Verse 4, he told God, You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you will answer me. Now, listen to verse 5 and verse 6. This is what Job said. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. 
Therefore, I despise myself and repent. Repent in dust and ashes. Wow, that's humility. Repent in dust and ashes. You know, you put yourself so low to the dust and to the ashes. Okay? Because this means that Job realized something. How small he is, how low, how inferior he is in contrast to the awesome, mighty, powerful, unlimited, indescribable, perfect, infallible God. God is God. You know, He is incapable of failure and error. Error, No. God is perfect. <coughs> Job realized that. And that He is sovereign. That God can do, God can allow what He wants to allow. And we are just His creation. Although a creation that He loved. Job came to the, his senses and realized really how small he is. But most people today don't see what Job saw during his time. People today act as though they don't need God. People today live their lives as though they can do it by themselves. You know, they, they thought they are smart enough and no need for God. They, they thought that they're smarter than God. Okay, that is how the people of today's generation live their lives because you see people are not really crying out to god when 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 there is flooding when we we experience uh, storms and things like that you don't see it in the news that people come and you know you know pray to god and and, and ask for help and mercy <clears throat> anyway anyway so for Job, he cannot fathom or grasp the wisdom of his Creator. So he has no right to speak against God, to justify himself. No, he has no right to do that. He understood he has no right to do that and that God knows better. Okay, That God knows everything and he knows what he's doing and that our part is to continue uh, uh, continue to trust in God. So it's it's giving God the full control. <laughs> okay? Uh, I like the song from uh, Carrie Underwood, Jesus Take the Wheel. If you, you're familiar with that song, you see uh, the idea is uh, surrendering to God. That's the key to victory. When you surrender to God, when you come to the point of surrendering your situation to God. When you surrender the steering wheel to God, Lord, Lord Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> so the question now is who is in control of your life? If you are in control of the steering wheel, you might turn to the wrong path, okay? But giving the control to God means, Lord, let your will be done. Not as I will, but your will be done. Okay, so he gets the full control of our lives. Then we get that we will get to the finish line because now God is in charge, right? So for as long as we think we can do it our way, as long as we think that, you know, we don't need God, we, we have, we're smart enough, we can do things by ourselves, and that we don't need God, then we see a lot of trouble and problems here and there. They come and go. You know why? Because we are in control. But when you get to the point, just like the Job, where the point of surrender, when he surrenders at God, he said, I have nothing to say. I mean, you, who am I? Okay, what did he say again? He said, uh, I, he said, I know that you can do all things. I mean, you say, I know that you are sovereign, Lord. No purpose of yours can be twisted, he said. He can be thwarted. So, at the last part, therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. So, we really cannot go against God because God is God. Okay, so uh, uh, the song says, Jesus take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel. 
Take it from my hands. Oh, I don't know the right tune. Cause, cause I can't do it. I, cause I can't do this on my own. Said I am letting go. So give me one more chance, and save me from this what? Save me from this road I'm on. Meaning to say you are on the wrong way. <laughs> you're, you're, you're driving and uh, you're on the wrong way. Okay. Save me from this road I'm on. Jesus, take the wheel. Now, you can browse that in uh, YouTube. You can look for uh, the song, Jesus, Take the Wheel by Carrie Underwood. And try to read the lyrics. You know, uh, you know who knows? That song will uh, cause you to surrender the steering wheel to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very important. Okay? So, instead of us fighting God... Let us surrender to His will. Stop fighting God. Let's stop doing that. You know, let's stop living in sin. Let's stop wasting our time. Let's stop fighting God and start working with God. Let me say that again. Let's stop fighting God and start working with God. Amen? So how? We participate, cooperate, serve. And work with God's people. You know, join the discipleship groups. Very important. Uh, we're not like G12. I'm not putting down G12. G12 is a God's institution. But my point is that every church has their own strategy, personality, identity. You know, they, they apply different methodology. Okay? So we're not like G12. We're, we're people who are told and brought to join their cell group. They're very strong in consolidation. Uh, they, they tell people, hey, join us here and there, etc. But, you see, we do the opposite. We, we want people to willingly submit to discipleship. We, we want people to see the need for discipleship and that they ask for it. They ask to be part of a discipleship group or a home group. Okay, some maybe someone can invite you to our home group, but you will have to decide. Okay, you you, you need to show hunger uh, to for discipleship. Okay, this is to avoid betrayal. This is to avoid the lack of commitment and loyalty. It's, we give you freedom, free will. I'm sorry, we give you free will. So if you want to join our discipleship, you know, uh, it's. The best way to get help, to get guidance, I, you see, we believe that uh, uh, understanding the times, the signs of the times, we see uh, um, that uh, we could end up in uh, famine, you know, shortages of food, etc. So there's, and so we're doing trainings and seminars and uh, we, we train people how to prepare just in case. That time is coming and we need to prepare. We just finished a, 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 a Davo Trade Agri Trade uh, Expo. And uh, I learned a lot, you know. I learned a lot from there. But one thing I'd like to, to mention is that if you start to do farming or planting to grow your own food, I thought, I really thought that you need an initial time like uh, uh, two to three years, okay? But, you know, hearing from the experts, from the pro or the professionals, from people in high places, those who are in the... Uh, uh, the politicians who are into agriculture, I just heard that you need an initial of three to five years. Wow. <laughs> so if you want to start to grow your own food, uh, the time is now. Okay, don't fight God. Just, just submit to His will, obey Him, follow Him. God will take care of you. Just make sure you're not fighting God. You're not against the Word of God, okay? So on a personal level, personal application, we were created by Him for Him and for His purpose and for His pleasure. Now, uh, to save time, John chapter 1, verse 1 says, that In the beginning that was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Verse 3, it says, Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. So it's, it's, it's through Jesus. All things were what? were made. Colossians 
Let me jump to verse 16 because uh, we're running out of time. It says, For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through Him and what? For Him. Remember, you were created by Him, through Him, and for Him. So stop living your lives the way you want it, the way you planned it. Because you know what? God has a plan for us. It's time for us to discover what that is and start living out our purpose and the plan that He intended for us to fulfill. Okay? And so it is very clear. We just read that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. So uh, 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 Ephesians chapter 2. Let's, let me just jump to verse 10. For we are God's, Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Meaning to say, before you got saved, already God has a plan for you. Again, that is something for us to, to discover. You need to seek God. Seek God. Seek and you shall find. Okay? Discover what that is and start fulfilling the plan of God for your life. Alright? So, uh, Revelation 4, 11, it says, Thou art worthy. O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure, for Your pleasure, they are and were created. Now, as part of God's creation, remember, remember we just read to you a while ago that we were created by Him, for Him. Uh, oh, uh, what's that again? We were created... Through Him, by Him, or for Him, okay? And we were created for His pleasure, for His glory, for His honor. And so the, the only way for you not to fight God is to submit to the will of God. It is to align your life, yourself, to the will of God. If you think your life is not aligned in the will of God, then it's time for you. You have the opportunity while you have the time and opportunity to change, to repent, to, to amend your life and your doings. Do it, okay? Because we are still living in a time of love and mercy, okay? Remember, it's not about our plans. It's not about your plan. It's, it's about His purpose. So you need to live your life according to God's purpose. God created you for something that He wants you to become, to fulfill, okay? So try to find what that is and start living out His plan. His purposes. Amen? So again, before I end, let's stop. Let me say this again. Let us stop fighting God and start working with God. We need to work with God's plan and purposes. Okay? So, discover what that is and start living out your purpose in His plan. So, God bless you all. We love you. Let me close in prayer. Father, we thank you for your message. I pray that many of those who have joined us today will realize the things, Lord, that uh, they were unaware of, that, Lord, uh, they were behaving as, as if uh, they are serving you, but, you, but not unknowingly they were actually uh, fighting you lord i pray that uh, help us understand and realize lord that our lives our actions our thoughts our words lord our lives lord we can we can we can oppose you we can fight you with our lives we can go against you with our lives. And that, Lord, we, we pray that as you expose all of this, I pray, Lord, that there will be uh, changes, oh God, that people will repent of the things that are not in align, not in line to your will. 
but that Lord they will start to get their lives straight that they will uh, um, that they will uh, start to uh, repent of the things repent of every sin that entangles Lord I pray Lord God that uh, you, you give us the, the grace and the wisdom Lord how to uh, help us Lord how to fix our lives especially those who have complicated relationships Lord I pray that they will do the right thing i pray that they w- i know it's not easy but lord i pray that you grant them the f- the grace the favor the strength that they need to surrender i pray that they get to the point uh where where, where job realized that you know no one can can wrestle against god and win and that lord you are sovereign that you can do all things and that you are perfect and and that you are you, you you're powerful that no one can no one can defeat you lord and that lord the only way for us to to have a to be victorious in this life the only way for us to be happy to have breakthroughs in this life is to align our lives to your will i pray lord god that people will stop fighting you lord i pray that everyone will start to cooperate with your will, with your spirit, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, thank you for your anointing. I declare to all of you, my brethren, and now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Amen.